one. Welcome to the DJ Storybook Interview Series, how the COVID-19 has affected the arts and beyond. Today, we have a very creative person on today, and I'm very glad that she was able to join us. This is Allison Cook Beatty Dance. Oh, sorry, Allison Cook Beatty, and she owns the Allison Cook Beatty Dance Company. How you doing, Allison? I'm good. Thank you for having me, Brian. Thank you very much for being part of this uh, series, and this is an, an I feel like you have a lot to say and your company, um, according to what I've seen on your Facebook feed, you've done a lot. So, so talk, talk to us about what you've been doing about your company. Sure. Well, thank you for having me again. Um, yeah, when all of this happened, um, when COVID started emerging, if you will, um, in Europe and in China, I, you know, I just kept watching the news. And I think we all at that point were, we knew it was coming here too, but just the, it was so hard to process and realize that so many people around the world, you know, just as everybody has been feeling this, uh, have been so horribly affected by, by this horrible disease. Um, our virus. So I knew that um, we, the world was basically going to take a huge pause. I could feel that. And I, I kind of needed to take my own pause or so for a week and kind of process that. <laughs> um, and then... Were, were you busy? Were you doing a lot up to this point? I mean, were you like your, your company was probably full steam ahead? And then suddenly, Allison, it was like a wall went down. Exactly. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it could be. Dev it was probably very devastating. In the beginning. It was. It was. It was sad. Um, it was, I, and I don't think I even realized how how big this was going to be, um, for lack of a better word. Um, but I, I knew it was a lot. I knew the, that wall was coming down on um, our entire season, really, which was canceled. And the company, we, we have worked so hard, just like all artists, um, in, in growing and not just in doing different work, but, you know, trying to grow the business part and get networked with other presenters. And so we were really excited for this year because we had a lot of great opportunities coming um, more so than in other years that we had. So, and that took a lot of work. That took, <laughs> but um, so, but that, besides that, it was, it, I knew this was happening to everybody and just to swallow um, all of this loss was I, I needed I needed a good week or so just to process that um, I think when I observe things in the world and I I see things I really feel it inside of me like in my whole body so sorry my treasurer is messaging me right now um, <laughs> uh, treasurer <laughs> Well, you know, you know, Allison, I'm going to just say this, and this is why we're talking today, mm -hmm. is because when you look at what you show, what you've done, that heart, that uh. feeling comes across. And, and I think we ha you had to make some decisions, but yeah. you, you, you made the decision to be creative. Oh, so, yeah. By your nature, you just went out on the baseball field and you created a piece on the baseball field. Yeah, I just knew, um, you know, I, I had to keep these dancers working and I had to keep being creative too. And but we had to keep the team together, basically. And I knew right from the start in that like transition week, like of processing, I, I knew I had to. I was going to have to work in ways that I had never worked before um, and I had to be brave and I, I had to uh, just just find new doors like mm -hmm. like in Alice in Wonderland like looking for <laughs> doors and like going through these 
you know, different adventures that I've never had before. So uh, that took a lot <laughs> to, to kind of get, muster that courage up. And then, yeah, we just started, um, I started all of these different creative projects and I had started going out to the baseball fields in April when things were a little better here in New York City. Um, I felt comfortable going by myself and kind of exploring um, what that would be like. And I found that the, you know, the baseball field was, it was a flat enough surface. And I thought, well, this is designed for athletes to run and mm. jump, fly. Um, and I did used to play softball. Um, <laughs> the game, I'm afraid of it, you know, so getting a little dirty now and then is okay. <laughs> it's okay. So, you know, you know, Allison, the, one of the piece, I want to talk about a couple of your pieces that you made, okay? Um, mm -hmm. The one was that solo with a girl on the wall and she had that yellow and she was going through this. Talk to me about that, that creative, creative process. Sure. Um, well, you probably see the green screen is still mm -hmm. behind here. This is, my home has turned into half dance studio, mm. um, like all of ours. And I started working with a composer, Jonathan Katz. He is the artistic director of Periapsis Music and Dance. Um, he's a wonderful composer and he had reached out and said, I'd like to make this short musical score. And so we started working on, like we thought less and more. So we started working together for musical composition and choreographic composition on how we could be very simple. And we began that way with like very simple pedestrian movements, standing, standing like a statue, standing like something else. And um, then I somehow decided, I felt like I wanted, to, I kind of created an obstacle course for myself. I, I brought in all different folding chairs and I put them all over. And so then I was experimenting with that pedestrian movement within an obstacle course that kind of was, and I, within my journey of that obstacle course, destructed it more. So within, and I kind of felt like a little trapped within this small space, within the obstacles. And so this kind of um, feeling of being trapped or confined as well as um, destruction kind of around me, I think everyone was kind of feeling point <laughs> yes um, well the way that, that she came out of the wall and she was yes. still part of the wall signifies or it, it really the symbol of the wall and we are in our walls literally as she's moving through and I think that that, that type of creativity is, is so is that word? poignant is the right word it's just so true to what is right now Yes, and you know, I I found. Thank you. I, I I it was just a coincidence that something in in um Jonathan's score, like maybe the second week in the process or third week, it it took my mind for no reason at all. I just thought of the short story, um, the yellow wallpaper, and I went back and I listened to the audio book. I'm like, oh my, God, this this is more of where where I feel like I'm going with this piece and um and so yes we kind of started exploring the green screen and we're still working on the project where we haven't finished it yet we um we have a lot of work to do on it but um yeah there was a lot of that kind of mental state of being trapped and and going through a very hard ordeal if you will um but then i recently very like yesterday I've been doing a lot of reading, um, and it's interesting because I don't think a lot of people know this, and I didn't realize this um, until this a few days, that uh, there is a lot of criticism connected to this short story, The Yellow Wallpaper, in terms of race, equality. And I, the, huh. the yellow... Interesting, yes, interesting. I didn't know this. I didn't either. And um, mm. the author, she spoke so 
much about, you know, feminist qualities and equality for women and all of this. So I thought in mental health for women and all these wonderful things, but she also, um, she did not have, um, she, she, she was, uh, she had some, some views about, um, people who were not like her. Um, and she, there were some, some race criticisms about her work. So when I just recently found that out, I thought, oh, this is so interesting because it's like the yellow, like, the tearing of the wallpaper and like tearing it down and like these layers of just like ripping it off. Like, I almost feel like that's what's happening right now too. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Allison, it's exactly, it's like, it's like an onion. We're peeling it, peeling it. And, and we haven't got to the core yet. We really haven't. So, so, you know, Allison, I, I, I guess it goes into the, the this, this sense of, re I would talk to you a little bit more, a little bit about responsibility. I use that word about when it comes to artists and what type of responsibility we have. You know, you've created this piece without knowing that this was really a peeling away of our society. It's like a peeling away. So, you know, is this something that you feel like you want to intentionally grow upon based on what's going on in this society, in your company? Do you feel, you know what, we need to tell these stories? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we have some pieces um, that are more political, I'll say, than others. Um, and that's always, a, you know, like last night, I don't know if you saw, I, 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 I just made on the fly this, this little video um, about Donald Trump and um, Pinocchio and yeah. um, everything. Cause when, I don't know, but that, that was, I, and I was nervous about posting it. I didn't post it on the company account. I posted it on my own uh, feed um, because, and it, it, you know, it was more of an improv kind of thing. It was like a minute long, but I, Whenever I do anything um, in the past political, I've always, I've never tried to really like hit anyone over the head. Like I, but this, what I did last night, I definitely did. Um, but I, I think we do have a responsibility and um, my company is the dancers bring so much to the work and they themselves are from all over the world and it's always been like that and I never really was like this is what it's going to be it just organically was and we had a lot of international dancers and I've been trying to support them in any way I can and so whenever I make a piece you know I'm I'm very interested in their voice coming through. And I think more than any time right now, I am, I am, I am hyper aware of, of their stories, not just my story or my observation on growing up in the society, but what they have to say, because what Carolina went through is not the same as Richard or Fiona or Vera or Ricardo or myself. And they're, you know, and I, I actually have been forward thinking, like, how can, how can I get these stories of, um, like, one dance I created with um, help from the great choreographer Doug Verone a few years ago. So um, it, it, it kind of formed into this um, piece about the, like, the have-nots and the people, like, the people behind the curve. It's called Behind the Curve. And Interesting. They're always trying to, like, kind of, like, on that little chipmunk circle thing. Like, you're, like, running, running. <laughs> trying to get somewhere, not getting, not getting anywhere. Interesting. Yeah. And um, last year we restaged it in our season and it has these huge like uh, cages or fences that like move around and like one of the 
the characters get trapped and she can't get out. And Carolina is originally from Chile and her, you know, everything that was happening last year with um, the Latino children being trapped in cages, like Carolina was was going through so much more uh, and feeling so much more. And that came out in her performance and we had conversations about it and she spoke to the other members who were in the dance about it. And from what it was to what it was last year, um, what I'm trying to say is like, that. that's just one example of how the dancers, they, their voices just come out so much. You, you, you know, I, you know, Allison, it sounds like, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong or not. Here we, you, you had a season, it's changed. <laughs> and the change, could, and when you look at uh, the future of your company, the change, there's going to be maybe a shift in how you approach the company in the sense of stories and, and really telling these people's experiences, which might, it might, um, what's the word, it might uh, change the way your company looks in some component, or it might expand your company. It, it's, a, it's almost like you've opened more doors. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I hope we can continue to do that. We, we are in the process of, of trying to make that happen. Yeah, much. You know, <laughs> yeah, it, well, so I wanted to finish off, and I'm glad we got to touch in on some of the society things because it because think it, and you you touch on it very well. The last thing I want to talk about is the last video that I saw of that group. It was about 15 minutes long, and the music that you put in there throughout the um, some of the movements the dancers were doing in their boxes that were similar to the ending when. Uh, <laughs> they were looking at the sky, you know. You know, a piece like that, it's so blunt in being trapped. It's just, it's just, this is what it is. Understanding what it is, is in a process of growing. Yeah. You know, and I think, feel that you've the, because of you've continued with your company and you're working in these projects the dancers are experiencing it in real time yeah yeah it yeah. can be an emotional roller coaster <laughs> <laughs> and that's the feel i get do you agree is this something that do you want to expand on that Sure. I think you're right on target there um, with your observation. Um, we, you know, we kind of check in with each other, see how everyone's doing. Um, not just, I mean, yes, the work, I think, the, the, the ones that are, are with me right now, I, they're very, they, they need, they need to dance. They need to have this as they always have as their expression. And, if someone felt uncomfortable about something, um, we talked about it. If, you know, we try to be as communicative as possible, um, we, you know, Carolina, for example, <laughs> I keep talking about Carolina, she um, has not yet come to the baseball fields um, because she hasn't felt comfortable going outside, you know, because of the pandemic. And I, I, didn't want to push her, you know, I, we did a different project together. Um, some of the, the other ladies had to leave the city um, and they came back for like a week or so and then they had to leave again and then they'll come back. And so through all, whatever, you know, most of them, three of them had to move apartments, like the moving process, the financial burden, everything that they're going through, um, 
the health of their, you know, their families in other countries. And so we have been trying to check in as much as possible. I have been trying to check in with myself as much as possible. You know, there are definitely days when I have been crying for six hours the night before over nothing really, just crying. And I, you just like feel like I came home one day and I sat down in my chair and tears just came out of my eyes. Like I wasn't, thinking about anything. I wasn't, I was just, I think, exhausted with, with emotion and like tears were just dripping down my face. And it was the weirdest experience ever. But so, and then I have to just, I have to somehow gather myself and, and be this leader. And, you know, but I think that they, you know, there's been like one or two times throughout these past few months where I just, I'm honest with them. And I say, you know, guys over the Zoom or wherever we are, I, I had a really hard day yesterday. Um, I'm feeling better, but let's just focus on the work. But I wanted to let you know that, you know, and that has helped that open communication. And we have a lot of honesty in our group and the dancers will let me know if they're having a hard day or if they had a hard day yesterday. And I think they're all very close too. So I know they reach out to one another. I think it's a good way to finish this interview. I got chills up my spine thinking about what you're talking about as a leader and what you've been through. You, you are, you've stomached it up to this point and you've, you've created a system for yourself how hard of that, you've, but you've created that, that, that line and you're going to go like that with it periodically. Your dancers know it, your funders, whoever you have, your organization knows it. That's what it takes right now. And it's called getting a steel, having a steel stomach and just knowing that's what it is. Allison, Cook, BD dance, <laughs> dance company. This is Alice Cook BD. Thank you very, very much for your time. I really appreciate it. And um, welcome. Thank you for watching the DJ Storybook interview series. My name is Brian Murphy. You can check out the rest of my videos that we've done on Polites by Murphy slash DJ Storybook. Thank you very much, Allison. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye.